Good morning. Reeducating the mind. Unquestionably a lofty goal, but one to which I am passionately committed. So I've come here today to convince you of the importance of this goal and to make you aware of the conditions both within society and within schools that make this goal so important. But most importantly, I've come here today to persuade you as the educational leaders, as researchers, as policymakers, and as parents that there are actions that we can and we must take now to address this very important goal. So how did I become so passionate about this issue? It actually happened quite recently. And this is after 45 years of being a classroom teacher and more than three decades of devoting myself to research on teaching and learning. I'm in the throes of one of my large lecture undergraduate classes at the University of Maryland. And I looked out on the faces of those 250 undergraduates. And the truth of the situation struck me so hard that I literally in that moment froze in the class. Because in that moment, what I realized is that my 20th century beliefs about teaching and learning were so ill-matched to the 21st century beliefs and habits of my students. What is it I believed? I believe that students came into my classroom with the goal of understanding what I was teaching, to make it part of their knowledge base, and then to use that knowledge long after my course was over. The reality? Those students were not the knowledge builders I envisioned. Rather, they were information managers. And by that I mean the students saw their jobs as figuring out precisely what was required to do well in my course. And once they ticked off all those boxes, to purge themselves of the useless information I had been teaching them. <laughs> so how did we get to this point? Is it simply that students today are unmotivated, apathetic, and as some people call them, incompetent learners? Not in the least. It's my argument that these are precisely the students that the world they live in and the schools they attend have helped to create. What are those conditions? Well, for one, when I looked out on that, those faces, those students, I realized they had lived in a world and only known a world marked by information saturation. From the moment students wake up to the moment they go to bed, they are literally inundated with information in all manner, all shape, and all form. As a consequence, those students can do little more in this unrelenting flood of information than skim the surface attentionally. And in order to survive, they have learned by necessity to multitask. And neither of those two conditions lead to deep and meaningful learning. But that's not the only thing. You see, these students I looked at have come to see schools as institutions of test preparation and not the bastions of learning we idealize them to be. But there is one more condition that I want to make us aware of. And that is that today, teachers in schools are called upon to teach more and more and more. And as a consequence, these teachers can do little more than mention. There's virtually little, if any, time to teach deeply and to, deep, to teach well, so that students come to find themselves in some meaningful way in that curriculum. So what do we do about it? What do we do about it? For one thing, let's learn to harness the best that technology has to offer. Technology is neither the hero nor the villain of this story. But we can come to use technology far more wisely. 
And by doing so, in, in order, I would say, to promote learning, not just to keep students busy. And in so doing, we have the chance not just to have smarter technology at our fingertips, but to have smarter students who know how to use that technology. And for another, we need to relegate assessment to its rightful place in the educational enterprise and to reinstitute learning as that centerpiece. By doing so, we have the chance to give students the opportunity to play with the ideas that populate the curriculum, to find themselves and to build their identities around those ideas, and not simply be, be unmotivated task performers. One more thing. Let us vow to teach more about less and to choose that less with great care so it represents the principles that are the heart and soul of the domains and disciplines that are the structure of schools. And then to give students and teachers the opportunity to find the connection and to make those principles personally relevant to each and every student. I came here today with three goals. One is to convince you of the importance of re-educating the mind. The other is to make you aware of conditions that you see every day that are contributing to this situation and this need. But most importantly, I came here today to persuade you, as the educational leaders, as policy makers, as researchers, as teachers, and as parents, that we must act now, we must take action now to address this goal. Because I believe in doing so. We have the opportunity to create a new vision of what it means to learn, and to learn well, and to learn deeply. We have a chance to work together to instill new habits of mind, and new habits of actions, both in teachers and in students that can bring together not only the knowledge building that I spoke of, but also effective information management. And by bringing these two together to foster optimal learning for all. Thank you.